We've been in Ireland now for a little while. After packing up our lives and selling our house, almost, more on that later, we'd shipped our camper van that was now our full-time home to the Emerald Isle itself. For the most part, we've been exploring the coast. We've been impressed by the scenery in awe at its history, battered by its weather, and that's not to mention the battering we've taken from its sea. But with Storm Babbitt rolling in and threatening to cause untold damage to where we were, we decided to retreat to higher ground. Having done van life on the coast during storms before, we know that this is not the most sensible place to reside in what is essentially a tiny tin box. We headed inland to explore one of Ireland's national parks. Of all the countries we've been to in the van, I have to say that Ireland is coming top of the list for wildlife. It is ridiculous the amount of wildlife that you can easily locate here. I don't know if you can hear them, but all around me there are stags gobbing off. It is rutting season still, so they are they are in their prime, they've got their antlers all topped up and I'm going to do my best to show you one if I can locate one that I can see. They're not easy to find in this landscape. about that then pretty special eh? well I hope so it's taken me hours to get that shot it's way past lunchtime already I had to wait over an hour for the male stag to come up with the female so that you could see his antlers properly but hopefully it was worth it I won't know till I get the the footage off properly back on the on the laptop we're in Killarney National Park I'll put a little map up Emily and I have been here actually for a few days uh, wandering around and exploring it this is the Kerry Way and this is a beautiful hike and today I've got the weather on my side it's not been too bad up here and um, we was down by the coast but we came inland and up a bit to get away from the the flooding and the storms that Storm Babbitt is it I think has presented and we have been really lucky we've had some great hikes some okay weather and the scenery well it's just bloody ridiculous isn't it We are parked up in a little forest clearing. It is a very busy forest clearing, I think because there's hikes in every which direction. But Halloween is approaching, so we are gonna need this. And Emily's in there doing baking. How's it going? I think it's going okay, but only time will tell, to be fair. This is the first time I'm doing it, so. And what's on the menu? Baked cheesecake. Oh, and pumpkin soup. Can't wait to see your pumpkin soup dance. Oh no. <laughs> We parked on a wall. Look at it. I'm also not sure it's meant to be that runny. First time doing a baked cheesecake. We're, it, it might be a baked mousse, Louise. This is the worst bit. Oh, watch my knife. This is your favourite part. I hate this. You love it. I hate it. At least we're not putting them on our heads this year. <laughs> that was fun. That was not fun. Maybe, maybe I'll get us to do it again. We're going to get another one. I don't think so. Look at us cooking together. I was going to say, because I'm doing all this prep, surely that constitutes cooking. Uh, do you know what? I'll give you that one, Louise. It does. So I, am, just... I am cooking. No, you're the sous chef. Super chef? I'll no. take it. Although the pumpkin's very stringy. Yeah, I, um, I'm glad we've got pot noodles at back up. <laughs> We don't need any more than that. You sure? Yeah. Oh, what have you got in there? Pumpkin, 
onion. I'm gonna put some potatoes in there. You can use coconut milk or you can use double cream. We're going for coconut milk. Then I'm just gonna see how it tastes and add a little bit of stuff in if I need to. And if you've ever tried to make videos in a busy car park before, it's not easy, so apologies for the background noise, but it is what it is. This is our life, isn't it? It, oh my God, this is, this, oh, little red book. This is our life, this is your life. Oh, <laughs> little red book, I've got a little black book. You have not. Love you. <laughs> So will it suffice? It will suffice very nicely, thank you very much. No pot noodles then. I did a good job of cooking the soup. It's all right, you know. I prefer carrot, <laughs> but it's edible. <laughs> and apparently pumpkin's good for you, right? I reckon so. What is it, a fruit or a vegetable? It's got seeds in it, so it's got to be a fruit, right? I don't know. Pumpkin soup was a winner. Well, it was a win from me. Emily was a little bit less convinced, weren't you? Yeah, it was all right. Don't get me wrong, but it just wasn't my favourite. I prefer carrot. We'll be having it once a year at Halloween. We was going to take you for uh, an evening stroll. There's a waterfall we want to go and check out, but the weather has turned. It is pretty miserable outside, which is good because it's emptied out the car park, but it's bad because we won't be taking you around. But, pièce de la résistance. Is that the right pièce de la résistance? Pièce de la... Fancy cake's coming in a minute. Oh. Maybe. How's it looking? I don't know. I think, I'm sure it wasn't this dark around the edges when I took it out. <laughs> I swear it's got darker. Is it well baked? It's well baked, I'd say. But uh, it's a first go, it's a first attempt. I reckon it'll be all right, you know. Oh, uh, we didn't get a pumpkin soup dance. You're oh, gonna have to do shame. a cheesecake shuffle instead. I've got no problem. <laughs> There's no shuffling. I don't know how to shuffle. <laughs> I don't know. We'll just do a shimmy like this. The Let's cheesecake sh shimmy? Yeah. We'll do a song. <laughs> no, 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 wait, just let me get the cheesecake out. I'm hungry. We all know Emily's got the sweet tooth, but cheesecake is my nemesis, so I'm looking forward to this. Oh, don't get your hopes up, babe. My hopes are up. I'll see if it'll come out. coming away from the base. I don't believe this is my best cheesecake, Louise. I think I should stick to non, non-baked non cheesecakes. You know how we had a backup dinner in case the dinner was shit? Yeah. Is there a backup pudding? Mm. You must um, have something in that snack cupboard. For me? Bloody hell, I don't want a piece that big. That big? Yeah. Your stuff is not good. It's more like quiche. <laughs> quiche. Healthy, low calorie cheesecake is, shit. is what I tried to make. And it's not gone well. A little bit like my um, low calorie brownies. Do you know what that means? We shouldn't have low calorie stuff. We should just have the normal stuff, Louise. Can't eat that. It tastes like quiche. Taste it. How? I just don't know. I followed the recipe and everything this time. Oh, it's not that bad. You've, you're just saying it's that. It's very cheesy. It's, it's, like a, it's like a cross between quiche and cheesecake. It's edible, but it is. You could put it with a salad and have a quiche salad. <laughs> <laughs> I actually spent time and everything reading the recipe and following it. Do you know why it was? Because you made me put all my baking stuff in the back and I didn't oh. have my scowls. I yep, didn't have my, my scowls. Completely my fault. Like, I didn't have my mixing my fault. bowl properly. Mm. I take full responsibility. You know the garbage, you can go in it and get that shit out, right? I can't, it's right at the back and you would have moaned me because you've been cold. I've been out all day. Whatever, Louise. Billy bullshit, that's what you are. <laughs> Billy bloody bullshit. I need to get my baking stuff out. Come on. Your candle's crap. <laughs> Is it not lying? It's away. Right, they've got it. They've got it? Yep, yeah, come on. Seeing as we couldn't do our early evening hike, plus it's dark outside now anyway, and with Halloween fast approaching, we need to thank this week's video sponsor, which is NordVPN. Now, if you've had your head under a rock for the last three years, you may not know what a VPN is, but many of you do. And for us, you will know that we use it all the time to stream Netflix catalogs and other, what are they called? 
streaming services to watch movies that we can't get in the UK. So a VPN, it basically, it masks your IP address. Now, one of the big benefits of this is it protects you online, especially when hooking up to unsecure public Wi-Fi. So it stops intrusive hackers and malware and dodgy ads and all that coming through. But for us living in a van when the days are getting shorter and the weather's getting worse and we are trapped in this tin box for quite a lot of time on end, we can access catalogs through the same method by masking our IP address and so pretending we're in a different country to watch different movies. Now, what is our movie of choice for tonight? We are watching The Monsters. The Monsters, you loved this show as a kid, right? Oh yes, absolutely loved it. And Herman was my favorite. Who wouldn't want him as a dad? It is on American Netflix. So we've whacked on the VPN, Emily's just done it, hooked up to American Netflix, and now we can watch The Monsters, which we couldn't get on our UK Netflix. So a bit cheeky, but it is a really good thing. We really, really like it because it is so simple to use. You just open up the app, pick a country, hit connect, and that is it, you are in. You can have it on up to six devices. We've got it on both our phones, both our laptops, and our tablet, meaning wherever we are, we are always protected. Now, if you want to try NordVPN for yourself, go to nordvpn.com forward slash campervibe to get yourself the two year plan with a huge discount plus four months extra. It's risk free with NordVPN 30 day money back guarantee. Now, I know you're not going to share the buttons, but will you at least share the blanket? Yes, of course. I think you have a button. One button? Two, you can have two. Oh, oh, oh. One for now, one for later. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, folks. We've come out quite early this morning. Well, I say early, it's about, what, half eight? Yeah, I was going to say, it's not that early. The, we're at that time of year where the clocks haven't changed, so it's still very dark in the mornings. We're going into the bleak, short days of the winter. I hate that time of year, do you? I know, it makes you, it just makes you feel like... Although, no, to be fair, I like it, because I like to get comfy cosy. She likes to get her pyjamas on, yeah, get, get her snacks, get in bed. Get hot chocolate going. I love it, me. I hate it, the days are too short. Anyway, we're going to go and check out this waterfall. The reason we've gone so early is because apparently it gets very busy, and judging by all the bus tours that are up and down this road, I would say that it does. So we're going to see if we can get it in a little bit of solitude. Uh, let's hope so. Fingers crossed for you. I never get to be pretty. I'm always the one no one knows. Never feel somebody like me. State of mind is always moving on. Cut through the chase and move quickly. Don't need no push it from you. Maybe you'll find me quite scary. I don't care if so, it's either or. We had a lot of rain overnight and it looks like it's flowing. It's quite a big one, isn't it? It is a big one, yeah. I'll tell you some fun facts when we get there. Woo! You can choose to win or lose. I give you the choice. The world is black or white either. Oh. This is Torp Waterfall. It is 20 metres high. And talk in the Irish translation means wild boar, which forms part of the legends here where a man was cursed by the devil to spend each night transformed into a boar, and the waterfall is said to hide his cave. Which I think is pretty cool actually. I believe that's why the waterfall is here, because of the man and the legend. That's a good fun fact. That is a very good fun I fact. Like, I like the, the legends more than the, the real stuff, to be honest with you, so I'm going for that one. That's it then, she's off. Off she goes. Well, we came a long way downhill, so figures that there's gonna be many steps to get us back up. Whew. And I can tell you now, all that running I've been doing, making sod all difference. Hopefully once we get around this bend, though, that'll be the end of them. Is there more? Yeah. Loads. Oh, for f Waterfall, what a spot. I recommend it if you're in the area. And now we're going to go and see what the Ring of Kerry has to offer. Oh, I'm excited about this. I've heard lots of really good things. So Anywhere that's called Ring of in the title oh. has got to be good, right? Just go. Um... Ring 
Kerry is a scenic drive located in Southwest Islands, County Kerry. It's a 179 kilometer circular route and we are gonna try our best to show you it, but the weather is looking a little bit iffy. Yes, the weather's all right now, but they give rain coming in this afternoon, but it's island, the forecast could be completely wrong. We're gonna try our best. Um, it is the rainiest country we've ever been to though, even though many of you from Wales have been in touch arguing the point, I don't know what you think is like, you know, a status thing to be the wettest. But I'll tell you how I know it's definitely the wettest place we've ever been. So I normally have like one main hat, I wear a hat all the time, I have a main hat and then I have a few other specific hats for things. This trip, I've had to go out and buy a second um, main hat because my main hat is getting so wet that I need a dry second main hat to put on. So that is how I know it is definitely the wettest. I've never had to do that in any other country, even in monsoon seasons in like tropical climates, right. never. Just stop using that as an excuse because you wanted a new hat. It's a nice hat, right? <laughs> on his leg. This drive, we're going up to Lady Something's View. Ladies View gift store, and apparently this is a really nice drive, and whoever told us that is not wrong, because it looks really pretty. Beautiful. Not stunning. Thank God we're stuck behind a cyclist. <laughs> Why, so that you've got an excuse to go slow? Oh, I can go slow, yeah, because these roads are narrow and steep. <laughs> yeah, we're looking at the view. Oh, wow, it is pretty, eh? Okay? Yes. But I'm all doing that, is it? Get off me! <laughs> This is a cracking spot to stop off at, and after the adventures of the morning, Ladies View Caf was a lovely place to top up the caffeine levels. We were soon back on the road. With the weather on our side and views to die for, we'd normally be in our element. However, on this particular day, we were somewhat distracted. Selling a house in the UK is for some reason never straightforward. Doing it from a foreign country in the middle of a national park with minimal phone service only adds a bit of sauce to the issue. Still, we weren't complaining. Look at where we were. As we meandered round the bends, we were doing our best not to get too distracted and continue to make one of our oh-so-informative grown-up travel videos. This drive is remarkable. Uh, for those that are interested, we are doing the Ring of Kerry anti-clockwise so that the edge is always on the other side of the road, so to speak, so Emily's not sat directly on the edge. So that's why we're going that way. We might get stuck behind some tour buses, I'm not sure, but we don't really care. In fact, tour buses will probably get stuck behind us. <laughs> I think that's more likely the case, yeah. The views are incredible, but we are not appreciating them as much as we should be. We was going to go to the Gap of Dunlow, but the weather is on the turn and we can't get much phone signal. It's in and out and we are having more problems with our house out, which we'll fill you in in a bit. Emily's been on the phone trying to sort it out. Uh, so we're going to go and try and find somewhere to pull over so we can deal with that. And then we'll update you hopefully when we've got a bit more information. As we headed away from the hills, making our way down toward the coast, the sea was soon back by our side. It might have taken me a second, but I soon realised I'd made a bit of a mistake. Uh, this ain't right. What do you mean? Well, if we was going anti-clockwise, the sea would be that side, but the sea is on the wrong side. Have you taken on us lost? I think I may have taken... You're following a map, how have you got us lost? I'm a bit distracted, aren't I? I've made a slight error. <laughs> Emily's just trying to find us somewhere to pull over so we can sort ourselves out. My concentration levels are not on the game today. Ah, uh, look, we've got a lot going on, so I'll forgive you this once, but don't let it happen again. Alright, here's the maps. Starting at 93 Pretty though. Emily had directed us to a camper stop in a little place called Sneem. Turns out it was a blinder. Sneem is another one of Ireland's colourful coastal towns. Sitting where the mountains meet the sea, its houses and shops will brighten up any bleak day. There's also plenty about to get Emily excited. You a cake? I can smell the chips. <laughs> Oh, it all smells so good. And if that's not colourful enough, you can always rely on Ireland's ever-present rainbows. Once you embrace the weather here, it becomes part of the adventure. I've mentioned before that a forecast is pointless. We much prefer Alex's way of doing it. Oh, 
The rain soon rolled in, so we retreated back to the van where more house sale frustrations were unfolding. Ah, oh, it's just so frustrating. <laughs> Seems like it's just dragging on too long now, but thanks for your help anyway. Thank you. Bye. Just want to cry. Just want to cry. I know, actually, I just want to look at houses. Shall I, uh, shall I bring Frank? Yes, bring him. Our emotional support pumpkin. <laughs> oh, I hope he lasts forever. I need the support right now. He won't. He'll last another day and then he's going because he takes up too much space. <gasps> okay, first things first, we'll tell you about where we're staying. What's it called? Goosey Island. Goosey Island, yes. It's a pretty cool little place. I like it. It's a lovely little park up. It's more of an air than a campsite, yes. but there is water, toilet dump, um, grey waste disposal, Yeah. no bins. No bins. And how much was it? £15 a night if you didn't want electric and £20 a night if you do want electric. And that's €15 Euros to yeah, the very sorry, angry, Euros. angry Irishman that had a go at me for £10 last time. Oh, sorry, it's just it's because we deal with pounds all of the time, so I forget. So apologies, €15 Euros without electric, €20 Euros with electric. Which is a good find here in Ireland, isn't it? Oh yeah, without a doubt. You know, like we were talking the other day that, you know, sometimes you have to think of what country you're in to whether it's a good deal or not. And I think this is a cracking deal. Cracking yeah. spot, cracking deal. Yes, right on the water, it is nice. Right, mm -hmm. now, we are going to stop travelling for a little bit, aren't we? We are, yes. <laughs> so uh, just to fill some of you in that wasn't here last time, so the house sale, um, you'll remember a few weeks back, we had to run round. Um, we was all due to exchange and complete. Our house was done. It was going through, and then we had to. There was this one bloody piece of paperwork that was decided it was needed right at the last minute. So we had to get it printed off. Well, we had to get it drawn up. Then we had to yep. get it printed off. Then we had to sign it, get it witnessed, and send the original copy. A photocopy wouldn't have done. The original copy back to the UK. We did that with the Irish Postal Service, yep. didn't we? It was great. Got to the UK fine within the time limit. And then what happened when it got to the UK? <laughs> It's, it's been sat in Heathrow Airport yep. for nearly three, three weeks. weeks and hasn't moved. So we paid for express service, signed delivery, all of that. We've been on the phone to the post office, which or the Royal Mail, which is yep. an absolute nightmare. You're on hold for over 30 minutes every single time for them to tell yep. you that they don't know where it is and there's nothing they can do. And as far as they're aware, it's still sat at Heathrow. But no one will go and look for it. No one, no one from our end is allowed to go and collect it and deliver it. Um, and we are now due to exchange and complete on our house in two days time. So two days time we're due to exchange and complete and this bit of paperwork is sat in Heathrow Airport. So we, can't, we need to stop. We need to stop somewhere where we've got good phone signal, good internet and fairly close to the airport because we, well, you may have to fly yes. home in a hurry. Right? We'll have to go and print out a new copy. I'll have to sign it, get it witnessed here. Emily, they want to take it, yep. get it signed and witnessed for yourself. Yep, yep. And then Emily will have to drop it off at the solicitors and then fly back to Ireland after that so we don't want to get too far into the coast and, and whatnot <laughs> i know it's just so frustrating because i really want to go around like the the kerry way and stuff like that and have a look at it but i just think it's a sensible thing for us to do right now is just to stay put we buy a little town that we can print the document off at there's even a solicitors here they've just got everything that we need in this little town with a good little park up until we know Oh, oh, do you know what? I'm just making myself feel better by going on about this because I'm just so frustrated and annoyed and I feel that like I've waited long enough. This little town's also got a bakery, a fish and chip shop and two ice cream parlours, which I think is the real reason we're staying. And do you know what? I need the comfort food, I'm not going to lie. Uh, so just to give you guys a bit of context, because I know we told you about the house sale, I think, in August? Was it? Roughly, roughly yeah. August time we told you we were sending out. But for us, the process has been going on much longer than that. So it's just... Since after... the start of the year. Yeah, so since the start of the year, we got the estate agents around, multiple estate agents, got the, the prices and whatnot. And then we went off to... France. France, to the French Alps. I was having a great time and then we had to come back, if you remember, due to a bereavement. So that kind of halted everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we then sorted out... Uh, Tilly the van, so yep, we was running around getting that sorted, and we did a couple of trips there, didn't we? Yep. We got the house back on the market in April. We got a buyer within two oh, days, three days, days yeah. of it going yeah. back on the market, and then so since April now till October, well, nearly November. So what's that like? Seven months. Seven months. This is going through. There's no chain. Cash no buyer. Chain. That's it. It should be the most simple house sale ever. No chain. No nothing. Look, I get it. I get that it takes a long time. I understand that. We've bought a house, we get it. But what I don't get is there's no chain. It should be quicker. 
Like, I'm sorry, it should be. Anyway, we're going to put our travels on hold while we sort this out because, we, to be honest, we're not going to appreciate what we're doing and seeing, no. are we? We're just going to be on the phone, thinking about other things. Um, it's not, Frustrated it, and... It's causing frustrations between us because all Emily wants to do is go and look at houses <laughs> and I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, not... Because for me, if I start doing that, I could get all excited and then it could just fall through or not happen or whatever. So we're, we're not arguing, but we're at loggerheads where every day you're going, oh, look at this one. And I'm like, nope, 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 to the point where we set up a whatsapp, WhatsApp group, group between us and there's about i don't know 50 unread messages of high houses that um, emily has sent to me to go and look at and i'm like i'm not looking i am not looking so but also once we do complete the house the travels will be on hold anyway because i'm going straight around this ring of houses that i've like picked to go and view i'm telling you i'm there Emily has next week off of work, completely off of work. And I know we've missed a few videos this year mm. due to those things we previously discussed, but we've not had time off together, like properly off the ever. Because this one likes to swan off on fancy foreign holidays and leave me in the lurch all by myself. But if our house isn't sold in two days' time, we are going to take next week off together, aren't we? And we're going to go yeah. and do fun stuff without the cameras and just have some time for us. If the house has sold, we'll be going around to look at houses. So there may be, we may miss a video or we may be showing you some of the properties we're looking at. So let us know in the I'm comments. I'm the latter. <laughs> let us know in the comments how much property search stuff you want to see and how much stuff you want to know about because, I don't know, it could get very boring. But, um... I don't know. I'd be really nosy, but especially with buying in a different country, like, you're going to want to see what's, what you can get for your buck over here, right? Yes, we're not 100% settled in Ireland, but we no. do really like it here, don't we? Oh, uh, I just... I just... Yeah, it just kind of feels feels a little bit right like when you're looking in in the uk to look at houses and stuff that feels right as well because it's home but also like when we've gone to other countries and lose like oh, i'd love to buy in france i'd love to buy in here i'm like mm, mm, mm. but when we're talking about ireland it's just it just feels like somewhere that you could settle and really be part of the community and stuff like that yes and the language barrier obviously here is much easier than abroad we are <laughs> going to look in scotland and uh, the north of england as well yep. aren't we? as well as wales mm -hmm. you know you found a few in wales that you like uh, but we're going to start in ireland and then see how we go unless we find our dream home you'll probably buy the first one you see <laughs> <laughs> just cash in your pocket i'll have it i'll take it Boom. It's Get gonna me be in. you, isn't it? Uh, but that's it. So yeah, our trip is going to be halted, suspended for uh, a little while, and then we will resume with more Irish travels in between property searching. Fingers crossed. Um, hit the like button for us if you can help wish us a little bit of luck Come that this on. bloody goes through in two days' time and we're done. And yeah, we're probably going to sleep for a couple of days and then we don't actually know what we're going to be doing. Do no, we, so. no. And sorry about like this rant at the end, but we're so frustrated and. We're kind of sick of each other running, so we're just going to tell you instead. <laughs> and on that note, I think that's where we'll leave it. So if you enjoyed this video, do the things or don't, whatever. And um, we'll see you all on the next one. Whenever. Which hopefully will be very soon. Fingers crossed. Bye. <laughs>